Welcome to another video of Robo CNC. I'm Marcel and I'm building a plasma CNC table and I'm taking you through all the steps with me in this in this build. So today I'm going to look into the different options of motors to drive the different axes. In the previous CNC builds I did, I always went with stepper motors, but this time I'm also going to look into servo motors and I'm going to take you in my journey in selecting the right one. So let's do a quick little recap. Hope you saw the last video, if not make sure to do so still. Um, but in the last video we made the z-axis and the z-axis is the up and down motion of the plasma torch in this CNC build. So the z-axis consists of a stationary backplate and it has some bearings on it, two linear rails and four bearing blocks, pillow blocks, and it has a front plate assembly. The motor that will be on here will have a spinning motion, a rotating motion, and the ball screw in the middle will translate the rotating motion of the motor into a linear motion of the z-axis. Now there is one special little thing, these top two bearing blocks and the bottom two are not physically connected completely, so this front plate can move up and down against a spring and that will be used to touch off on the material to find where the metal is that we are trying to cut. Now, what are we missing here? We're missing a motor. There needs to be a motor on top here to position this z-axis. First of all, to control a CNC axis, we cannot use a normal AC or DC electric motor because we don't just want the motor to rotate, we want to control positioning very accurate. Now, for moving a CNC axis quickly and position it very accurately, there are basically two types of motor. The stepper motor and the servo motor. Now, in choosing between the two, we should dive a bit deeper into how these motors work. You can see that stepper motors and servo motors come in different sizes. These physical dimensions, and in particular these flanges, the mounting characteristics, are standardized by the National Electrical Manufacturers Association, NEMA for short. On the left we see three motors, one clear pad servo and two stepper motors, with the same size, NEMA 34. And although they differ in physical size and power, the flanges are all the same. The NEMA 34 have a 3.4 by 3.4 square flange, which is about 85 millimeters in metric. Further to the right, we see a NEMA 23, which is a 2.3 inch or about 57 millimeters. And the tiny guy in the right hand corner is a NEMA 17, which is about 42 millimeters. And now this is just what I had laying around, but be aware, there are much, much, much more. So in understanding these stepper motors better, I took one apart. I took the rotor out of the stator and let's zoom in a little bit closer to see how these stepper motors work. On the left we see the stator and in the perimeter of the stator in the slots there are coils and these coils can be uh, energized to create a magnetic field and that magnetic field is then uh, transferred to the teeth you see in the stator so the bright lines in between of the black lines now the rotor uh, is of course inside that magnetic field and it also has teeth um, and the rotor consists of four discs uh, that hold permanent magnets. Um, so let's jump into Fusion 360 to look a bit more into the details. Now welcome in Autodesk Fusion where I took the time to model the 
uh, stepper motor. Now let me remove the front cap um, and the rotor to see the uh, stator. Now the stator is a metal housing with slots, um, eight slots in this case, and those slots can house windings. So these windings can be energized by putting a voltage on there and that will create a current through the winding and therefore create a magnetic field. So this magnetic field will then be transferred into this metal piece and this metal piece has a few teeth that will well, pinpoint uh, or uh, create a, a strong direction of the magnetic field towards the rotor. Now putting the rotor back in, or let me just take the rotor, you see that the, the rotor consists of discs. It's, uh, uh, the red ones uh, are a magnetic north pole and the blue ones are a magnetic south pole. So this rotor has uh, two sets, but there are also stepper motors with three or four sets or only one set. And that has something to do with uh, the holding torque or the power of the motor. Now, again, the rotor also has teeth and it has 50 teeth around the perimeter to be exact. And you also can see that the north and the south poles are exactly in between of each other. So now let me put the windings and the body back. And then you can see that these uh, teeth can be aligned with the teeth of the stator. And um, so let's simulate uh, what would happen with the magnetic field this way. On the left we see the stepper motor stator with the coils in the perimeter. On the right side of the stepper motor you see the red and the blue wire are connected to group A or coil A and the green and the black wire are connected to coil B. Now if I energize coil A with a positive voltage uh, we see that the top and the bottom coil become a north pole, a magnetic north pole, and the left and the right coil are becoming a magnetic south pole. So now when putting the rotor back in, the teeth of the red uh, coils are exactly in line with the blue disc of the rotor. And the opposite is true for the blue coils, which is attracting the red disc of the rotor. Now when de-energizing coil A and energizing coil B, we see that the same thing is happening and the rotor will rotate 1.8 degrees since there are 50 teeth on the rotor. Now the next step would uh, again involve the top and the left and right coil, but this time I need to energize them the opposite way. So I put a negative voltage on coil A to get the next 1.8 degree. And the same is true for coil B. If I de-energize A and put a negative on B, we see that we made the last step. Now this method of driving a stepper motor is called single phase full step excitation and the downside of it is that we always have only four coils that are energized and therefore not producing the maximum amount of torque. Now when energizing all coils at the same time we get a dual phase or two phase full step excitation. And by doing this we increase the torque and we still have the same step resolution uh, since there are basically four different um, positions. So coil A positive and coil B positive, then you see coil B still positive but A negative, then A and B negative, A positive B negative and A positive B positive and therefore still we have 200 steps per revolution of the stepper motor. So the first positive thing on the stepper motor, now we've seen the internals, it's, it's easy. It's an easy design, it's easy to build and therefore stepper motors are cheap. Now we also saw that by controlling double coils, so all the coils in the perimeter, we can increase the torque um, by a significant amount. We're not doubling it but we're increasing it by a significant amount. The controlling of these coils is a bit hard to do by yourself. So stepper motors 
come with or should come with stepper motor drivers. Stepper motor drivers are controlling the current that goes through these coils. Remember, it's not the voltage that creates the magnetic field, it's the current as a result of that voltage that creates the magnetic field. Now, in the last simulation we saw that we had the top coil and the one next beside it had the same magnetic field, the magnetic north pole, full power. So the magnetic field is in between them. One is pulling at the rotor and the other one is pulling at the rotor. Now, if I would be able to decrease one of those coils a little bit in current and increase the other one a little bit, I can also change the magnetic field between those two tending to go to one or the other. This is called micro-stepping. Let's see the electrical signal on the oscilloscope. I made a big mess here with the power supply, an oscilloscope, a stepper motor, a stepper driver and a shitload of wires. So let me take you in a little bit closer and we see the screen, the purple is one of the voltages applied, the blue is one of the voltages applied and the yellow and the light blue are the current through the two coils and as a result of those voltages. So in full step mode, which we are doing here, um, you see that the purple line is the voltage over coil A and the yellow line is the current through coil A. So when we apply voltage, the current goes through the coil and the magnetic field is built just like the yellow line. Now, after a while, the blue line comes up to a positive voltage. So also coil B is now energized and you see the light blue climbing up as which is the current and basically the magnetic field. So then after a while, the purple goes to negative and you see that the current drops to negative or the magnetic field changes direction and so on. Now this is full step mode and you see that it's, well, it's, it's a bit like a jerky motion. Uh, it's magnetic or it's not. Now if the current doesn't go from positive to negative in a straight line but we put a transition step in between of zero current um, then we basically have 400 steps per revolution and this is also called uh, half stepping. Now in trying to create this step behavior of, uh, of the current or the magnetic field the stepper motor has to send pulses of voltage to the current and basically with pulses controlling the stepper motor current and there is one of the downsides of a stepper motor which we will see later now if we only focus on the current you see it's starting to look a bit more like a sine wave and a cosine wave which is a good thing now increasing the micro stepping from 400 steps to 800 steps per revolution again the cosine and the sine wave start to be uh, much better of shape but you can see that those uh, peaks in the voltage are creating a lot of noise uh, in the signal. Now this uh, behavior is only amplified when I go to 1600 or even 3200 steps per revolution. Uh, revolution and of course these micro steps do come with the advantage of having much more position uh, control of the stepper motor uh, and that's what a CNC machine needs of course. Now for now I think we've seen the internals of a stepper motor um, and we have a rough understanding about how it works. If you want to have a more in-depth video on it just leave me uh, some comments down below and I could do so in the future. But what we want to do is compare them to servo motors. And for this I have chosen clear pad servo motors and there are many reasons to do so and I will get into more depth about that. Um, first step would be look inside the servo motor. Now, 
I'm not going to open this one. I'm not going to look inside to show its internals. But luckily, Greg DeVille on Instagram, a great photographer who loves to do detailed pictures of electronics, took one apart. And ClearPad itself, Technic, uh, the company behind the ClearPad servos, also has some in-depth information on their website, um, mainly on the Hudson motor, which is, well, the basis on what these servo motors are made of. Now when looking inside the ClearPad servo motor, you see that the back side houses the drive. So just like with the stepper motor, also a servo motor needs a way to drive the coils in creating those uh, magnetic fields. And inside the servo motor that's quite refined uh, compared to a stepper motor. Turning the motor around we see the front side and again this looks quite refined in comparison to a stepper motor. The design of the stator coils seem to uh, be like a three phase induction motor actually. And we see some permanent magnets on the rotor. But it's different than a stepper motor so let's have a look into Fusion 360 again and try to figure out how this stuff works. Now on the left the stepper motor uh, rotor uh, has the discs in or the poles in its axis, so axial uh, aligned. And basically all the 50 teeth will become poles and be attracted by the stator. Now with the servo motor you have only 8 poles and the magnets are not uh, spaced axially but uh, radial. So if you have a smooth rotating uh, field around this rotor, you can also have a smooth rotating uh, rotor instead of having uh, determined steps and having a lot of detent torque uh, around the rotor. Now as with the stepper motor, you also see that there are three um, magnets in line this time. And Having more of these magnets in line makes the motor bigger and have a higher uh, power output. Now another thing to notice is that the servo motor uses rare earth magnets while the stepper motor uses the less expensive conventional magnets. Now these rare earth magnets enable the development of a higher torque output in a smaller package. So this is where the servo motors gain a torque advantage. Uh, within the overall physical size. Now if I show the body or the stator of the stepper motor and the one of the clear pad servo motor um, we can clearly see that there is a big difference in these. Uh, not only the rotor or the stator I mean of the servo has much more slots uh, than the stepper motor the ones on the servo motor are skewed, so they are rotated a little bit around um, or along the axes. Now, this slight skew is uh, in the in the stator uh, lamination um, is to provide a more uniform electromagnetic field. So again, this is an improvement on the stepper motor. So getting a more uniform electric field. Uh, over the complete rotor. Now putting the windings back in the two motors also shows that the servo has a lot more poles around the perimeter and they are not divided in two groups group A and group B no they are divided in basically three groups so it's a three phase brushless servo motor. Where the stepper motor had 50 teeth or 50 poles on its uh, axes, on its rotor, there is only 8 in the servo motor. So it's an 8 pole servo motor. Um, around the perimeter, however, there are much more coils to create a smooth magnetic field. And again, there are like teeth uh, in the stator. And in this case, there are 18. So it's an 18 tooth, 8 pole, 3 phase uh, servo motor. On the left we see the IPC5, which is the power supply, 75 volt DC power supply that Technic sells to power these servo motors. Now, 
it's intelligent as they say but it's just a simple dc power supply with a positive and a negative terminal so nowhere near any sinusoidal so somewhere in the system needs to be a network as we see in the right lower corner and although it's absolutely simplified uh, it contains like six MOSFETs that can create three-phase sinusoidals from a DC. So where could it be? Uh, luckily Greg Deville opened up the driver even more and the uh, next board we see here uh, clearly has six beautiful MOSFETs in line that are creating the three-phase voltage uh, so the smooth sinusoidal voltage to create a magnetic field around the perimeter of the rotor so when winding a permanent magnet servo motor you have quite some possibilities in how to wind them and i'm not exactly sure how technic did it and it's not that uh, important but i will link an interesting article down below uh, in the fact that an 8 pole 18 tooth uh, or slot motor might have some interesting shifting combinations uh, in his windings to improve the uh, harmonic behavior of the uh, magnetic field driving the rotor. Well, it's just an interesting read. Now on the right we see the three sinusoidal voltages. The red, the yellow and the blue are connected to the red, the yellow and the blue coils inside the stator and they will create a current and therefore a magnetic field in this stator. Now these magnetic fluxes of the three coils all differ but they can be added up together and therefore creating eight poles of magnetic fields around the perimeter of the rotor or inside the stator. And of course these eight poles can then rotate smoothly around the rotor and taking the rotor with them and of course they can also be stationary at any given position to hold the position of the rotor. Now when looking closer to one of the pictures of Greg we see that uh, on the PCB is uh, some kind of optical device that can look towards the rotor. Now and if we do the same and look towards the rotor we see that there is a disc and if I zoom in a little bit you can see that there are small lines on this disc and the optical device and together with this disc is called an encoder and this encoder tells the servo drive exactly at what position the rotor shaft is. So we've seen the internals of the servo motor and we've seen it's quite refined compared to a stepper motor. Um, another thing to take note of is that due to the encoder positioner, the, en the, the, the drive always knows exactly where the rotor is. That has a couple of advantages. One is that if the rotor is not where it's supposed to be, the drive will correct for it. And that's totally different with the stepper motor because if the rotor is not where the, ro where the drive thinks it is, things will go crooked in your CNC machine. Now the other advantage is that a magnetic field reacting upon another magnetic field, which is happening, the rotor against the stator, is at its highest torque at a 90 degree shift. So if the magnetic fields are not in line but exactly 90 degrees shifted you have the highest torque output now that's impossible to do in a stepper motor but if you know the position of the uh, rotor you can control it via the servo drive now in most servos the drive is separate but in the clear pad servos they are integrated and I absolutely love that so there's going power this way and communication but no high current uh, signals that are messing up uh, in my uh, CNC controller. So that's integrated inside the servo. Another great thing is they are smooth. They, they travel smooth. There's no detent torque like in a stepper motor. If you take a stepper motor for instance, if, if you rotate this, it, you, you can feel all the detents from the 200 steps that are inside these motors and that makes that these servo motors really run smooth. Now of course the proof is in 
the testing of these motors. And on the right side you see the clear pad uh, integrated servo motor, so the drive is integrated. And on the left side you see the stepper motor and even further to the left you see the stepper motor driver. Now uh, keep in mind this is already a digital driver so they are more expensive but uh, run a lot smoother. Now let's start by putting the drives at 400 pulses per revolution. So uh, this is already half stepping. And let's rotate the stepper motor and the servo motor about 130 revolutions per minute and listen to the result. Well, for sure the clear pad is the clear winner here. It's super smooth. Now let's try this test again, but with 51,200 steps per revolution and see if the stepper gets much smoother. So it got smoother but still the clear pad is the clear clear winner. Now and the other thing is it could not get the motors to run at 130 revolutions per minute anymore. So basically the computer or the controller is not keeping up with that amount of pulses needed to rotate the motor that quickly. So let's say I put the steps back to uh, 6400 steps per revolution to get a higher maximum RPM output. Uh, I, I set the motor speed to around 700 revolutions per minute which seems to be the maximum uh, this stepper motor can do with this acceleration and this uh, voltage applied to the driver. <laughs> Now we can clearly see that the stepper motor is starting to lose steps and even the clamp. Where the servo motor still runs smooth and still can do much faster than this actually. Um, now let's head on over to a website and find a similar stepper motor and find this clear pad servo to compare the two power curves. Now I thought before I head over to the websites and while the motors are still warm I thought it's a good idea to show that there is quite a lot to see with the FLIR uh, infrared camera if we talk about uh, heat emission or basically the efficiency of these motors uh, and the drives. So welcome on the Technic website uh, with all the ClearPad servo motors. Now I'm going to do a full video in selecting the right servo motor for your application but for now let's go with the SDSK 3426P since that's the one I have on the bench right here. Scrolling down we can find some specifications at 75 volt DC this motor can produce 4.9 Newton meters of maximum torque, so holding torque, and that's with 3000 rpm maximum speed. Now on the right side of the specs we can see a clear graph that shows the torque on the y-axis and the speed on the x-axis. Now let's find a stepper motor, so stepper online, great resource, uh, let's go for a hybrid stepper motor, NEMA 34. Let's go with bipolar, so an A and a B coil as we have seen in the simulation. And we of course need the torque and thrust curve. And this is in Newton centimeters, so we need 500 or close to 500. So something like this going up, 
finding a NEMA 34 stepper motor bipolar with 4.8 newton meters of torque. Um, so let's check this one out. Well, as we see, it's dirt cheap, 27 or 28 uh, dollars. Going down, finding some specifications. Maximum torque is 480 newton centimeters, so that's 4.8 newton meters, which is this, well, quite similar than the stepper or the servo. And here we see the torque curve. Now, let me try to get these curves next to each other. So I took the data of both the websites and plotted them in one graph. On the y-axis you see the peak torque in newton meters, so the maximum torque the motor can deliver for a short amount of time. And on the x-axis you see the speed of the motor, the RPMs. Now the basic difference between these two is that a servo, as you can see, can deliver the same torque, peak torque in this case, over a big range of RPM. So from standstill to about a thousand RPM, it can deliver the five newton meters of torque. The stepper motor on the other hand, it can deliver the same five newton meters of torque when standing still, but when the motor starts to rotate, the maximum torque it can deliver starts to drop quite quickly. Now if you only have to withstand an external force, for instance a z-axis and keep it in the air and move it slowly, then the curve of the stepper motor is not all that bad. But if you have a heavy gantry uh, of a plasma CNC built of a lot of metal and you want to accelerate it from zero or standstill to a certain speed, it's nice to have that peak torque available up until a certain amount of RPMs to accelerate the beast. Now while I was researching the topic I found the website Forgecap where they are comparing BLDC motors with stepper motors. Where, well, I'm not going to go into BLDC motors but uh, they have a lot of similar similarities with the servo motor. Um, anyway, they are exploring the stepper motor pull-out torque on this website. And um, stepper motor pull-out torque is basically the curve that we had uh, in front of us uh, right now. Um, to better understand how the maximum pull-out torque defined, they explain how they measure these graphs. And that's quite an interesting read. Um, but also this, they have the pull-out torque in practice. And in practice the pull-out torque curve is defined as the torque speed range the motor can safely be driven in open loop. But for the maximum load a safety factor of usually 30% is considered. Now, as we see in this graph, they say this is the maximum load curve that we have seen, but please take a 30% safety factor when using stepper motors in open loop. So I think you guessed it by now, I'm gonna go with servo motors this time. I've been doing CNC stuff since around 2010. I've built a number of CNC machines. Uh, look onto my website and look in the history of the YouTube channel. And every time I went with stepper motors. So why? It's not only that servo motors are more expensive. There's another big, big, big disadvantage. And that's what kept me away from servo motors all these years. Servo motors need tuning. You cannot put a servo motor on the z-axis like I did here and think it's gonna run okay. It's gonna create a lot of problems when you do so. There's control loop inside. The servo motor has feedback so it checks where it is and if it isn't where it's supposed to be it's gonna control to go there. And that sounds easy, but like for instance PID controllers, it's difficult to tune them. And this is not controlling the temperature of your uh, water inside your bath. It's not controlling the temperature inside your house. I'm not saying that's easy, but mechanics, they have vibrations, they have different forces, they have external forces, they have things like inertia. 
So tuning a servo motor is complex and that's what kept me away from servo motors until now. So I'll probably do a separate video on this tuning matter later on, but uh, here I plugged in a USB cable in the drive or in the motor basically, hit auto tune, click next a couple of times and then tell the motor or the drive that it has a limited travel uh, on which it can do its uh, tuning uh, magic. And then I hit the run button and after a couple of minutes, around I think 10 minutes or so, uh, it's just finished with the tuning. Come on, this is made too easy for us. Now keep in mind this is just an example on the bench. Uh, with the real tuning of course it needs to be vertical uh, mounted on the real machine and with the mechanics on there a router or, uh, or even the plasma torch should be on the z-axis while tuning of course. But tuning the servo is not holding me back anymore. Auto tuning, love it. Um, comparing a stepper motor with a servo motor, it's a difficult task. It's a depending on your application. If you're building a simple setup that needs to lift a router, go with a uh, simple stepper motor. If you're building a 3D printer, go with a stepper motor. There are even stepper motors with closed loop feedback. Uh, I, I, I think you're repairing something that is broken uh, it's not really my thing but um, for me i think the servo motors are more expensive but they're worth it um, and again it's up to your application it's your design i hope at least you learned something about the differences between the two So, I'm going to go for the clear pad servos. Um, much more detail about these motors and choosing the right one for your application in the upcoming videos. Much more details on building the plasma machine in the next video. So, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to get notified and thank you for watching. I know it was a bit technical, it was a bit long. But if you want to choose between two completely different style motors, you better understand how these things work. Thanks for watching.